Hey everybody, this is former WWF and WWE diva Terry Reynolds, and you are listening to the Gerwick Report podcast with Steve Gerwick and Frank D. www.gerwick.net, your source on the World Wide Web for all your pro wrestling news since 1997. Another edition of the Gerwick Report podcast. Today I have a very special guest with me. She is a former WWF Hardcore Champion and a former WWF Diva. Today I present the very sultry Terry Runnels. How are you doing today, Terry? I am great. How are you, Steve? Doing great. Terry, you just, uh, over the weekend, you were in Milwaukee. I know you're working with uh, David Hero, which is a friend of ours here on, on the show. Talk about that show and meeting up, meeting up once again with the likes of Kevin Nash and Matt Hardy. Well, first of all, let me just tell you, like, right now... I'm sitting here outside, blue skies, gorgeous day in Florida, and it's completely the opposite of what I left yesterday, which was, believe it or not, even more enjoyable to me with the um, cool, crisp air of Milwaukee. I had an incredible time up there, Um, love the fans up there, and I love, love, love to see my good friends. Um, Kevin and I have been friends for umpteen thousand years. In fact, we were we were talking yesterday, and he said, "Do you realize that you were the very first person I met in wrestling?" And and I'm like, "What?" He goes, "No, Tara, like really, you were the first person I ever met, other than signing my contract and and doing that. You did my makeup. You were the first person I met. So wow. we go." back as to the beginning of his career so yeah now i know you make a personal appearances you do meet and greet uh what is kind of the most common question you receive from the fans well some some are funny like um you know uh, were you really married to gold dust and uh you know stuff like that but i think the the main question that drives me crazy because i feel like i've said it so many times over and over again is how did you get started in wrestling? That one, right. I, I want to say, go back and find a, a, another interview and listen to it because I don't want to say it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I just, I love, I love meeting the fans. So usually, usually their questions in person are more fun than, uh, than the, the questions they hit me with on the computer. I'm assuming yeah. they probably ask too is, when are you going to go back to uh, WWE, or when are you going to go back into wrestling? That and the the silly, yeah. you know, the silly comments about me helping them through their puberty and all that, <laughs> oh, you know, and 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 uh, yeah, yeah. While while I'm appreciative of of compliments, I you know I could do without some of those comments. <laughs> well, I guess while we're on that particular topic, uh, one of the questions I've been asked is. Did you ever do anything in wrestling? Have you, have you ever been asked to do anything in wrestling that you weren't comfortable with? Because I'm thinking today, you know, today's wrestling is really geared towards 13-year-old kids. And back in 97, 98, during the heyday of the Monday Night Wars, obviously it was an older crowd. But yet, certainly there were kids that watched wrestling back in the day. Was there anything you were asked to do, didn't see eye to eye with, and didn't really want to do? Um, well, understand that it was a lot of it was really difficult for me to do in terms of um you know I'm a character on Monday night and then I fly home on Wednesday and I go to my child's private school and you know I'm there to pick up my child and the other mothers say oh we saw you Monday night and you know on and you know Monday night I was in a thong and you know doing something wild crazy and silly and so I remember you know before the moms got to know me they were they had a much different opinion of me and then once they realized okay she's you know she bakes cupcakes and she's very into her child and she's a good mom you know then their opinion of me changed but um you know yeah things were a lot different back then you know the 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 thing I did on Shotgun Saturday Night, where it, you know from the camera's angle, I flashed Rikishi, who was not Rikishi back at that point, um, but you know I I had pasties on, so I was 
you know, I was not seen naked, but of course that's what you were supposed to think is that I was, you know, topless and showing showing my bosoms <laughs> to uh, puppies to him. But yeah, I that, and it, it's funny when 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 I came back stage after that, Vince gave me the biggest hug and said thank you so much for doing that. That was incredible. So, you know, I. I, I think the the thing that I was honestly the most uncomfortable with was an angle where, um, and it was a Russo angle where um, he, I was to do the whole miscarriage thing, and you know with with Val Venus and D'Lo Brown and all that stuff, and and Dakota was young at the time, and and I thought you know I just don't want her hearing at school, oh your mom you know was going to have a baby and she lost it and. I just didn't, I, I don't know, I thought that was tacky, and there was there was a lot of stuff there that was, I was just telling someone this past weekend, a lot of the things that we did in the Attitude Era were incredible because they were double entendre, so that it went completely over a child's head, but um, was was not lost on the adults, it was, you know, much appreciated on the adults' um, end of it, so... I really wish that they would do more of that kind of thing so you kind of keep um, keep it more titillating for the adults and yet tame enough for the kids. But, you know, when you have shareholders and you're a public company, it, it's, a, it's a cat of a different color. You were showing a lot of skin, uh, scantily clad women at that time. Just in general, how hard is it to stay in that great of shape? I mean, we saw a lot of you. We saw a lot of the divas back in the day. Uh, talk about training, just how hard it is to eat and stay in shape when you're, you know, you're asked to, to go out there in a bikini or do a thong or, or whatever it is to, to look so good on television week after week. Well, thank you for saying that I looked good, first of all. Um, that was always uh, something that was, you know, it was this pervasive thought. You have to, you know, if I eat an Oreo, am I going to have, uh, you know, a circle show up <laughs> on, my, <laughs> on my butt or on my, on my abs? Um, my thing was always I wanted to be as tiny as possible. Like I, you know, a lot of the girls want to train and become bigger and, and more muscular and, and my whole thing was I wanted to be as lean and tiny as possible. I thought it looked better when the guys, you know, picked me up by my neck and, you know, if, when I was thrown or what, like when China shook me like a rag doll. Um, I liked being little. So my thing was always to just stay lean. Um, I have a gym at my home, a tanning bed at my home, so... And, and I really have never enjoyed training in public. So my thing was always, you know, I when I got home, I was mom first and foremost. And a lot of times I would end up, you know, I would be on the Stairmaster at 2 o'clock in the morning or, you know, working out at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever. So I do remember that when I left in 2004, I decided I'm going to take a complete sabbatical. I will not lift a weight, I will not run, I will not do anything um, regarding, you know, working out for one year. So I gave myself permission for one year to do nothing. And then the sad part is one year turned to two, two to three, three to four, and jump ahead. And then it went to like nine years and I had not trained or done anything. I ended up gaining on my five-foot frame, I think I, the heaviest I got was 127 pounds. And um, I've got a picture from the appearance I did up in New York um, that I, I just looked like a bloated, to me, I looked like a beach whale. But So after that, I decided, okay, enough is enough. And I just, you know, I cut out, I used to love my wine. I cut out all that. And I really got serious about it. And what's crazy is I went from 127 and I got all the way down to 91 pounds, which it, it oh was like, you know, once the ball got rolling, it ended up rolling too far. And so I remember Dakota saying to me, Mom, you look like a bobblehead. And, and my sister said, 
chest hair, you look like you have worms. Like <laughs> you, you, <laughs> oh, you don't look good. And I really didn't. I looked horrible. So then I started trying to put the weight back on, and it's crazy, but it for a while it was like nothing would stick. Like no matter what I ate, I couldn't gain the weight back, which – then I started worrying, like, you know, gosh, is something really wrong with me? But now I'm I'm at my comfortable weight of anywhere between 98 pounds and 105 pounds. I'm, I'm comfortable. So I'm at a healthy weight now. I can relate to that. But let's take six months off. Let's take a year off. Let's take 18 months off and then just goes <laughs> and goes. The, the domino effect. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it, maybe next month, huh? Yeah, it gets a little <laughs> too easy to be lazy, I tell ya. <laughs> now, you. Now, you were just mentioning uh, Rikishi, you know, when you're talking about the shotgun Saturday night angle. Uh, I believe he was, he was probably about the Sultan at that time. Yeah, he was the Sultan, yes. Right, right. And last night they announced that Rikishi is going to go into the WWF Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame to be technical. Uh, right. Thoughts on Rikishi being announced for the Hall of Fame? Well, to me, he's Junior. He always has been. You know, he, I've known Junior since, geez, 1980, maybe as far as 8, 7, 88, somewhere back in there. But he's one of those people that it, it's funny. Um, back in the day when, when you're traveling with people, um, when someone would be let go and – you didn't really realize it, and then all of a sudden you'd be like, oh, wow, you know, so-and-so's not here anymore. Um, but it, it was crazy how it would take you time before you even realized someone was gone. Junior is one of those people that I always missed if he was gone. I've loved from the beginning. He's always been one of my favorites, and I'm, I'm really happy to see him inducted. You know, I think... We, we were talking about this also this past weekend. Um, I did a, a, a radio show on Sunday morning, and um, they were asking me about the Hall of Fame, and I said, you know, it, it makes me sad to know that there are so many wrestlers that are older that really, really deserve to be inducted, and it's like they get passed over. And I understand it is about ratings, and, and there has to be, you know, a, interest in that person but it breaks my heart sometimes for some of the younger guys to be inducted and there are some older much more worthy people um you know that that should be and they get passed over so i i like it when you know some of the older people get inducted i'm not saying junior's older i'm just saying he certainly is worthy and and i'm thrilled that he's going in now you mentioned Dakota a couple of times. I got to ask about her. How old is she today? Because we obviously she kind of grew up in front of our eyes and with WWF television back in the day. And does she have any interest at all in the wrestling? Obviously, you were in wrestling. Her dad's in wrestling. Her uncle's in wrestling. Her grandfather's in wrestling. Does she have any interest? Maybe someday following in their footsteps. My child, I should say our child, um, will be. She is twenty as we speak, but. On Valentine's Day, she will turn 21. And oh, wow. it's funny because she just said to me the other day, she's like, Mom, you know, this is really depressing. I said, what, what's that? She goes, well, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. She said, the thing that everyone looks forward to on their 21st birthday, I really could care less about. So <laughs> um, she's like, I'm not looking forward to it like most do. And I'm like, okay, we've got to find some things that you couldn't do before that you can do now. She's like, okay, I can rent a car now. Um, I can gamble. I can go to a casino now. <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're trying to come up with um, something fun that we can do for her 21st. Um, I know her boyfriend is flying in, and so I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll conjure up some fun. But, yeah, she, she'll be 21 soon. She is so surrounded by wrestling. It's so in her blood, not only by the people you just mentioned, but also, you know, two uncles um, by marriage. Tugboat, who used to be married to um, Dusty's sister, sister-in-law, and then Jerry Saganowicz, Knobs and Sags. 
so she is literally, it's, it's all around her, but she doesn't have any interest in it. Her major is in communications and film production, documentaries. In fact, she's working on one right now for, for um, one of her classes. So, you know, she loves it. She used to travel with me every single week. She was on a plane with me going somewhere. And she grew up having a lot of uncles, and I'm doing air quotes right now, uncles in the business because, you know, all the boys were, were like her, either big brother or uncles on the road. So um, she loves it, but not to do it, I guess, is the best way to say it. Over the years, has she been encouraged or discouraged to get into the profession? About okay. it all the time, but yeah, she's never, never expressed an interest. And, you know, if anything, Dakota is a very cerebral, very, um, very smart child. And I think if anything, she might want to do something uh, regarding production and be more on, on the brainiac end of it. Well, I tell you, Terry, you must have done something right. If she's never done drugs, she's not into drinking, not all those taboos. I'd say you've done pretty well raising her as a mom. Well, I, I thank you. That's. That is, if, if you ask me, the best thing I've ever done in my life is, is being her mom. And um, I think she's also learned from the mistakes of her parents, which is great. You know, she's seen some things that she's realized, ooh, I don't want to do that and look like that. And she has a, she has a low tolerance for um, drunken fools, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm so proud of her. She's incredible. She um, her sense of humor is very dry, and she is witty and and can quip with the best of them. So she's awesome. I just wondered with your schedule, do you get a chance to watch uh, WWE Today, Raw, SmackDown? Do you keep up with uh, wrestling at all? I'm ashamed to tell you, I don't watch it as much as I probably should. You know, if, if Dakota tells me, you know, Dad is doing this or, you know, if, if there's something that, that she mentions or, you know, that Dust is going to do that I want to watch, I watch. Um, occasionally, you know, I'll be scrolling and, and see it and stop. But, no, I don't watch the product like I probably should. I think you mentioned before, uh, you know, today is obviously a PG era. We've, we're more cartoonish. We're... Vince has the sponsorship that he wants, and obviously we don't have the viewership. I mean, we talk about, you know, Monday nights, 6.0 ratings, 5.0 ratings. Now it's a 3.0 ratings, considered a good rating. Do you right. think the do you think the PG, the, the format change, has really hurt the product over the years and take away from the viewership? I mean, obviously we have a lot less fans today watch wrestling than they did, say, in 1999. Right. Yeah, you know, and and – I, I do think that, that a lot of the, the racy stuff is missed. Um, you know, no blood, no, you know, there's a lot of things that, that can't happen that used to evoke emotion and, and make people want to tune in. And, you know, it is a more canned product, so to speak. I, I, I can do without, and I never, like, I thought we went past the point of, of, of um, being racy when we did, like, like the whole Godfather hot lesbian action, the HLA, when, when Kane, um, the whole necrophilia thing with Kane. and Katie Vick, you know, yep. yeah, I, yeah, I really thought that that was totally unnecessary. Like, the, the kind of thing where a lot, of, a lot of the things that Dustin said and did, you know, were double entendres, where... Um, you know, he would say something like, you know, I'm going to, you know, come in your back door. And, you know, a kid doesn't understand what that means, but every adult understands what, you know, that connotation was. And, and I, I really, I wish they would go back to a little bit of that that they could get away with, um, but not so much the, the, um, the visual where, like, I remember Dakota saying to me, Mom, why are those two girls kissing? And, you know, it's like, how do you, you know, that stuff that you have to explain, you can't get that over a kid's head. So I wish they'd be a little bit more creative and, and um, like, even, even as, as, like, even the costuming. 
you know, that's one thing I loved about what I brought because when, when I came up with the Marlena gimmick, everything about my idea was to be so different, you know, to wear these long old Hollywood gowns to the ring and, you know, with my cigar, which I'm enjoying as we speak, you know, it was to, to really be a character and be different. And now it's like all of the, like the, the girls, for instance, I think they are beautiful. I think they, you know, they look great, but it's like everyone's costuming is kind of like, it looks good, but it, I, I don't know. It's like there, there, there are not enough characters. Like, like the the um, who was it? Bray, Bray Wyatt, the, and uh, yeah, yeah Bo Dallas. Yeah, and 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 yeah, Bo and Dallas, and and so like I love that that you know you've got some people that look different, and I love our seamstresses, and they do a great job, but sometimes. I think we rely too much on them to create the outfit so that it ends up looking a lot alike. I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Now, I, I know you were talking about you don't really watch wrestling other than maybe what uh, you know Dakota tells you about, but it looks like right now that Stardust and Goldust are probably on a collision course to you know possibly have a have the match that we've been talking about for a long time. People wanted you know Goldust versus Cody Rhodes back in the day. We maybe we'll finally get it. I just thought with the new gimmick of Stardust, wouldn't it be interesting if Marlena came back and would actually side with Stardust in his feud against Goldust? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that would be interesting if Marlena jumped in the picture. That's been talked about a lot, and I don't know if that's going to happen. I really, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I'm not a fan of, of Cody's character at all. I mean, I... I I, I think that what what Dustin did in creating Goldust was incredible, and I will always be proud of him for the way he took that character and and ran with it and made it incredible. Um, and I don't know. I've just I've not been able to sink my teeth into the whole Stardust thing. I love Cody. I think he he's a great wrestler. But speaking of that, you just you just never know what you're going to see when you tune in. So I'll leave it at that. I guess, would you be open to maybe going back on the road with WWE? How, how is your relationship currently with, with the company? Um, great. I just I went over and, and did a few hours of recording some, some stuff for them not too long ago. And, you know, I mean, they'll always be family. I, you know, even though things have changed so much and, and – there's just there's a completely different feel about everything um, that will always be family to me. So there's love there because um, I was just watching. Like I haven't talked to um, Lisa Moretti Ivory in, in in ages, and like I would love to get in touch with her. I don't have her number. I haven't talked to her in ages. I miss her, but. I stumbled upon a shoot interview that she had done, and she was talking about how um, what a, what a pain it was that everyone had to uh, dress up. Um, you know, the edict with WWE was you had to be in dress clothes when you were out in public representing the company, and I laughed because I never like that's the way. I went to TVs, that's the way, from the time I left my hometown to go to TVs, to any time I was on an airplane, any time I was anywhere, you never saw me in sweats, you never saw me in scrubby, I was always dressed. And, you know, it was funny when people started complaining about, God, we have to dress up just to fly, I'm thinking, well, hell, that's the way I've done it the entire time. And that is my thought, you know, when, when you're out there, you are an extension of the brand, and I didn't want to look half-assed when I was traveling from place to place. So I think it's kind of funny that some people complain about it, but that, that was the way I, I lived my life on the road. So, what, You were talking about doing interviews, going back to WWE, did some interviews. Was that for the WWE Network, some other future projects or DVDs? or? 
Yeah. Can you comment on that? Yeah. Okay. Good. Do you do you have the WWE Network and do you watch it? Oh, don't ask me that because then I have to be honest <laughs> and tell you I don't. Oh, okay. I should. I, okay, here's what I'll say. I don't have it, but I'm getting it really soon, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> really soon. You know, I'm going to get it. For somebody like you, I mean, like Deja Vu, I mean, everything that you've pretty much done is, is probably on there now. Yeah, so, and it's, you know, I think it's really cool when fans will say, oh, I just watched this match or this pay-per-view, and, man, I really missed that, or that was really cool, or whatever. I mean, I think it's great for the fans. I really do. And I think I think the price of what you're getting, I, I think it's a wonderful price. What is it, like nine ninety nine or something? Yep, and, yep. And, and with that, don't you get the pay-per-views and... and is that correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah, I mean, I are, yep, included. Yep. You would almost be a fool if you were a fan, um, if you've ever been a fan. And that goes back to WCW. I mean, if you're a fan of wrestling at all, you'd almost be a fool not to, you know, have that. So I think it's a great a great idea, and I hope it, it, it succeeds and does well. Over the years, have you ever been contacted about doing uh, Playboy? Because obviously Playboy did what Tori Wilson and China back in the day. I just wondered if... You, they ever contacted you for a, a possible shoot? Way back when, yes, and the answer was no because of my child. Okay. Um, I just said, uh, you know, I thought, how can I say to my child, um, you know, Dakota, be a lady, and, uh, you know, this is how a lady should act in public and whatever. I mean, you know, there were a lot of things that, that were sexual that I did, with my character on TV, but pretty much Playboy, you're not in character. You are, you know, I would have been just Terry Runnels, and for me to sit there with my legs spread wide open and for my child to have to, um, you know, go, hey, Mom, so what was that you were telling me about being a lady? And so here you sit with, I can see everything and then some. Yeah, that was just not for me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Vince Russo may be probably one of the most polarizing characters in professional wrestling. People love a lot of the things that he wrote. Some people are very negative on, on Vince Russo. What's your overall opinion of him? I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. I I was one of the ones, Dustin and I were, were, were some of the people that knew that Vince was writing and booking a lot of the, of the um, angles long before it was truly known that he was one of the writers. Um, he was so great to Goldust and I. Then at a certain point when he actually came out as a writer and when he came out as, when, when he was the main guy, he kind of took, you know, he was the one, like I said, that came up with the whole miscarriage idea and some stuff. And, you know, I some of the stuff I just didn't like, and he pissed me off, and, you know, I was not happy with some stuff. But I'll always love Vince for the things he did do, and I, I call him Big Jooch. He'll always be my Big Jooch. So, you know, I think when he went down to WCW, I think he got a little full of himself and needed to be brought back to life, and I think he, he did. He humbled himself, and... I like I like that Vince. I like the Vince that, you know, was in the beginning of my Marlena career, the Vince that was not necessarily ego driven. That that's the Vince that I love. So you've been uh, pretty much away from wrestling on a regular basis uh, since like two thousand four when you said you, you went home and you gave yourself a year off and then you know, year after year it kinda went by. <laughs> I just wonder over the over the years, have you ever been contacted by like TNA to maybe work for you know another wrestling group? Never to work for any other wrestling group, and I've said I've said no to any time I've been asked to wrestle. It's just I'll never do it again. I'll never. I'll I'll you know some of these things I'll I'll manage. I don't mind taking bumps. You know I I I meant that I was going to get color. Um, I. I I pretty much, the, the, the Brian Pillman angle, and I know this is off of the topic, uh, the question you just asked me, but it just made me think of something. When we were going to do the whole Pillman angle, I wanted to get color 
when when we did that, like when when Brian, when Dustin and I were going to renew our vows, and and actually, my image was and the way we were going to do it. Um, I was going to be in my gold wedding dress, you know, and we were going to get to the part where it said, you know, is there anyone here who sees any reason for these two not to be joined? And, you know, Pillman was going to come out, and he and Dustin were going to go at it. And then instead of me continuing on and, and being with Dustin, I was going to throw my body on top of Brian, who would have gotten color at that point, and there would have been blood all over my wedding dress and I was going to go with Brian and that's how we were going to do that angle. And of course the sad news came that Brian passed away and so we we switched and um, we did the, the angle with Luna, which I had just done. Um, I, in fact, it was the first time I'd ever met her um, doing a, a little side third-party thing for AFA up in Pennsylvania. And I came back and I said, Vince, this would be so awesome if we turned it around and if Dustin went with Luna and so that's how we did that angle but you know that that's one thing that that I did that I I love that I did I love that you know I it was for a, a match I don't even remember where we were but I was working with Danny Demento the cold-hearted player Danny Demento and um so yeah he gigged me and I had a blast. I had a blast doing it because I'm like, how many women get color in the business? And, you know, there are just things you can't do anymore. So that was fun for me. And, um, but I'll never, I'll never wrestle again. So just, yeah. it was just like Vince th threw it at me one day. Like, I mean, I've been taking bumps for, you know, a while from the boys, which I love. It's great. I love that. But then he just has this happy idea that I'm going to wrestle. And, I mean, I begged him, please, please, please. I'm not, I, I don't want to. I'm not good at it. I d and, and his answer was always, you're, you're going to be great. No, Terry, you're going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be fine. And I kid you not, like every time the man <laughs> wanted me to wrestle, I went and said the same thing. I remember one time saying to him, Vince, when people love something, when they're really passionate about something, they do a much better job at it. And I'm really passionate about managing, <laughs> and I'm really not passionate about actually wrestling another female. I don't want to. Oh, you'll be great. So, yeah. I mean, I, I did the best I could. God bless every female that ever had to work with me that was, in fact, a trained wrestler, um, you know, I would go out there and, and for that day, I would learn, you know, three, four, five moves and pull it off somehow that evening. And, you know, and then the next time he would want me to wrestle, it would be, okay, well, here, learn another move to add to those three that you just learned. And, but, yeah, and, and in fact, it, it's interesting because, like, I have real issues with my lower back now, and, you know, I have to get injections in my facet joints, and it's just, it's a, it's, it's a constant pain, and I think the reason that my injuries have, have carried over this far in my life and that, that they are chronic is because when you're not doing this stuff day in and day out on a regular basis, your body does not handle the bumps the same way. It's just like, you know, the boys will tell you when when they've been off for an injury or, you know, and they've got ring rust, um, it's so much easier to, to get injured. And I think that's why I wrestled so few matches compared to most people, but yet I've got, you know, a worse injury to my lower back than than I probably would have had I wrestled all the time, so I will I will always give praise and kudos to my my sisters and my brethren who trained and want to be wrestlers. You know, you were talking there that your your passion was managing, and yeah. you know, ob obviously I grew up watching wrestling when there were great wrestling managers. There was Bobby the Brain Heenan and Jimmy Hart, Jim Cornette, et cetera, et cetera. And then it was a, it was a period where 
my favorite. Paul Bear. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And then we went more towards valets, kind of in that attitude era. And now today, you really don't see a manager. In fact, if you have a manager today, they don't even call him manager. It's like he's an advisor or he's an agent. You know, it's like managing's like taboo anymore. You know, what happened to managers? And do you ever see managers coming back and playing a more prominent role in wrestling? I predict that, you know, everything that's old is new again. Um, I predict you will see the resurgence and, um, you know, what, what happens is after a while you go back and you look and you go, what worked back then? What, what, what was it about the 80s that worked? What was it about the 90s that worked? What was it about? And you go back and, you know, you, you almost have to go back and find um, components of things that worked and, and infuse them into um, storylines again. So I predict... And, and there are always fun ways to use managers, always, always, always. So I predict you will see more of that. And, you know, it, it beefs up um, the wrestler's character even more to, you know, it, it's also great. I was used a lot when, when, you know, some of the guys I was with didn't necessarily talk that well and they weren't that well-versed on the mic. It was easy to put me with them because I had no problems on the mic. So, yeah, you know, I think I think you'll see more of that happen again. Yeah, when you think of, when you think about '80s and '90s wrestling. I'm thinking, where's where's the tag teams? You know, now we split up tag teams so quickly. If you're together a year, mm -hmm. that's like a long tag team anymore. I mean, back in the day, there was Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, the Road Warriors. I mean, they kept these yeah. teams together for years. Now we just it, split everybody up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really miss like you used to um, back in the good old days. You know, if you were starting an angle with this guy, you knew you were going to be working that guy for at least three, six, nine months even. And you had time to really play that angle out. And, I mean, it was so fun, so much fun. Now it is so fast-paced, and, you know, almost with every pay-per-view comes a new angle and then another new angle, and then, you know, it's just it's so – it's it's so quick now. I wish I wish we would tell the story um, longer and um, you know go into more detail and 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 drag it out like it, it it used to be. That would be you know it was it was fun. It was it was a lot more fun back then.